So this is Lakeshore Avenue, and uh, the first time I ever visited Chicago, I have a really distinct memory driving down Lakeshore Avenue with two of my college teammates, Sean and Patrick. And we were coming to town to try out for a team in the Frontier League called the Windy City Thunderbolts. And it was one of those situations where it was like this beautiful day. I think it was, I think it was late May, and it was 2009, and it was one of those like 65 degree, like absurdly warm days for Chicago because Chicago doesn't warm up until really like the middle of June. But we were out here on Lakeshore Avenue. Everyone was out. People were everywhere because it was so warm and they, you know, you hibernate here in the winter. But everyone was out running on their bikes, on their scooters, on all sorts of stuff, just trying to enjoy the warm weather. Because Chicago is a gorgeous city, but it's so cold in the winter and it's so windy and uh, it's just kind of miserable but in the summer it's a pretty nice place and so that was my first of a bunch of different pro tryouts that i went to and i never made any of the teams i never got a contract from any pro tryout that i attended i got cut at every single one of them that was the first and one of the things i just absolutely hated as a kid absolutely hated was tryouts every year when tryouts rolled around, I just dreaded it because they're just miserable. You feel like you have to be someone that you're not. You try super hard. Everyone's watching you. It just wasn't what baseball is supposed to be. It's not what sports are supposed to be. It's so high pressure and sterile. And pro tryouts are the worst. I mean, they're so fast. You get 15 pitches if you're a pitcher. You get 10, 12 swings if you're a hitter, if you're lucky. And it's so hard to stick out from the crowd. And that trial was like all the rest for me because I'm 5'11 and a half on a good day. Like if the wind's blowing up, maybe I'm closer to six foot than not. And it's like, how am I going to stand out from a crowd? You know, I've been a right-hander at the time. I was 88 to 90, which was better than it is today. Today that's like, you're like a 13 year old if you throw 88 to 90. But you know, I just, I had a good curveball. I had a decent changeup at that point. My changeup got a lot better over time, got a lot better later on. You know, I was just an average sized right-hander who threw about as hard as, you know, Division I right-handers did, and I was there competing against 50 other pitchers. Like, why, why would they choose me? And I think that's a common thing for so many young pitchers. Like, how do I stand out of a crowd if I'm not six foot five? I'm not throwing 96. You know, if I'm a hitter and I'm not throwing, you know, hitting just five, six, seven, eight tanks in a round of 12 swings of BP. It's just, it's so hard to say, this is who I am, I'm the guy you want in a crowd of 50, 100, 200, 300 ball players. You know, at some of these tryouts, uh, these league-wide tryouts, you'll get 300 guys show up. Like, how are they gonna notice you? And so that was something that I always struggled with was, how am I gonna get my chance? And at tryouts, I never did. I never got signed from a single tryout that I attended, but I always seem to find a back road in. And so for a lot of players that don't understand how important it is to be a good teammate and to be a coachable kid, to be someone who works hard and does the right stuff when people aren't watching. It's because when you can't make a team at a tryout like I couldn't, then you have to have other people that vouch for you. Every time I got signed, it was because somebody stuck their neck out for me and made a call or a second call or a third call saying, no, this kid works hard. He'll be an asset to your team. He's got the ability, but you're not gonna see him out of the crowd so you just got to give him a chance. When you guys have a spot, if you get an opening, if you release a guy, give him a chance. 
And that's where it comes down to character. And it comes down to just doing things the right way because that's how you're gonna end up getting someone to vouch for you and getting yourself that chance that you otherwise wouldn't at a tryout. And really that's how it is for a lot of stars who don't have just that gargantuan presence, you know, guys that aren't John Carlos Stanton. You have players like Jose Altuve and Dustin Pedroia are great examples. They got chances because, not just because the way they played, but I guarantee there were so many people vouching for those guys along the way, saying, give him a chance, he's small but he can play. He'll add wins to your team. He'll do the things you need when the game's on the line. And my college coach, you, you would say, boy, you can't try harder in this game. He'd say in that like kind of drawn out, he wasn't Southern, but really he was just from Maryland. And it was 100% true. And the older you get, the more you realize this, but especially at a tryout where you're just not like the biggest kid that sticks out it's impossible to not want to try harder, to want to just be like a little faster, to want to throw a little harder, to want to field a little bit better, whatever even that means. But you just end up pressing, you end up trying to be perfect, and that just makes everything worse. And as a coach, I see it at tryouts, you see kids that are clearly just nervous, they're just trying so hard, they're wound up, because they just want to do well, they want to make the team, they want to have fun playing baseball. And it's just a miserable experience. Just tryouts are just awful. And the biggest challenge throughout any athlete's career is just not trying harder when the pressure's on, whether that's in a trial, whether it's in a game, it doesn't matter. It's, it's always the same pressure, but just trying to be yourself, to be the best version you can be, it's one of the hardest challenges. It just comes back to kind of like that philosophy of knowing yourself. And so I remember the year I finally made a team when I got a contract with Normal in spring training. I was the only player they hadn't seen. Uh, all the other guys had been recruited at some point. The coach had seen them, you know, he'd signed them, whatever it was. Uh, they hadn't seen me. I had three different people vouch for me, and I got a spring training invite. And from there, I was still in the same position. I was this six foot right hander amongst 16 or 17 other pitchers, pretty much all of who were taller than me. And it was 15, 17 days to just prove that I belonged there. And I couldn't do that by trying harder. I wasn't gonna magically become taller or throw harder than I already did. So I just did my thing. I conducted myself the best way I knew how. I went through my pregame routine. I went through my practice routine. I just threw every baseball with a purpose, just like I always kind of had. And with enough time, with enough reps, with the coaches finally seeing me enough, they started to see something that they wanted to keep on their team. And when I got my chance, I executed, I pitched well, but it just took a lot of intangible stuff to give me that first chance. So really to me, if you do it right, a tryout is more like an art show where who you are at your best is someone you've already built. It's not someone who gets better the day of. Again, you can't try harder and suddenly be a different version of yourself that can win. Like you can either win when you show up or you can't and you do that by being who you are. Paint the painting beforehand and you bring it and it's either gonna win or it's not. You do your best and it's either gonna be good enough or it's not. And pressing and trying harder just, it doesn't improve on that. When you call my name, I move in circles. When you 